Hello, good morning. I hope that you're well and that you've had a good week. My week has just flown around. I just don't understand it. The older I've got, the shorter the day has become. Um, I get up in the morning with this list of things I want to do and so often I don't achieve them. And it's not because I've been dilly-dallying. You know, when I get up, I'm like a dynamo. Um, I don't know. There we are. It's better to be busy. That is for certain. Now, um, this week, um, the postman has brought all sorts of things to me. Um, one of the first things to arrive um, this week was a card from um, a needle worker who had the red box. And it's so lovely to go out into my porch after the postman has been and see in the pile of post a card. Um, I'm getting very excited opening these. Um, this one has come from America and um, it's telling me that the lady loved the sample box. Um, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, you know, they weren't done for the sake of it. They were done, you know, for um, needle workers' enjoyment. Um, this uh, lady goes on to say, one of my favourite things about your samplers is the history and the backstory on the original stitcher and all the time she lived. Um, and she encloses some articles that she recently found whilst cleaning out a bookcase. Um, and she's enclosed two articles from some old magazines. And I really, really enjoyed dipping into these. Now, I'm not going to read the whole articles. But what I am going to do is I'm going to read some sentences that I think are quite thought provoking. Begun as a pattern reference guide in the 16th century, samplers composed on a piece of linen by a student as she learned needlework, served to teach reading and writing. They were often the sum total of the young girl's education. And that is so true. And it's one of the things that make these little girl samplers so precious. Um, this article, um, I'm not sure what magazine it uh, comes from, but it was very, very interesting to read the whole article. And then this uh, article, now it does say where this one comes from. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, this article, oh, it does. Early American Life magazine uh, from 1984. And it's appreciating American samplers. Um, one of the sentences that really touched me was, every girl was taught to embroider letters in marking stitch. One was considered very poorly educated who could not exhibit a sampler. Some of these were large and elaborate specimens of handiwork, framed and glazed. They often formed the chief ornament of the sitting room or best parlour. And then the other sentence in this article that really strikes a chord with me, and it's something I feel very passionate about, is that there is a tendency to class all samplers as folk art. This is unfortunate, for many of them represent the highest skill. Um, and that is so true. Um, when you see the workmanship in some of these young girls' samplers, they're not folk art, they're fine art, and they should be appreciated as fine art. And I think sometimes when you go to museums, and I'm not saying all museums, but some museums, um, samplers are relegated to you know, a dark, dusty corner or into a storage cupboard or vault, not prominently displayed and I think it's such a shame because for me there is as much to appreciate in some of these samplers as there are in you know a an oil painting by Tur Turner, Gainsborough, um, Leonardo da Vinci. Honestly there is so much skill in some of these samplers and I would just like to be able to go into museums and 
see these works in the right type of lighting where they can be really appreciated. But there we are, I'll get off my high horse now. Um, the second card I received um, was all the way from Australia. Um, and it's a really, I just loved reading this. Um, and um, the lady sent me a hand-knit gift. Um, and she calls this a knitted sampler. And it's true, it is a sampler. It's a sampler of stitches and different yarns. Um, what was really lovely is that she, this lady is only just back into cross stitch after a 30 year break with a busy career and she's stitching Mary Ann Priest. Um, and it's bringing her joy in her retirement. Now, um, this beautiful stole, um, I call it a stole, but I think it's actually um, a wrap, is by Thoroughlines. And uh, I think the designer is Erin Kurup, K-U-R-U-P. Uh, the yarn is Black Wattle Sweet Pea in multiple shades, and it's a merino alpaca and silk. And Miss Click Clack Merino Singles, the beige spotted sections. And, and it's in the Colourway Hope Town Tea Rooms, a famous cafe in Melbourne and all these yarns are Australian hand dyed. Let me share them to you. Um, I can feel the love in this um, stole. When I unpacked it I was like oh my god this is so beautiful and immediately I had to put it on and play with it and as I was wrapping it around my neck I could feel the love that was sent um, or I worked into this beautiful stole. The colours are fabulous. Look at those colours. And the stitching, uh, not the stitching, the knitting is exquisite. Um, the colours um, in this are just so beautiful that you can wear this with so many different outfits. This is something that I'm going to get a lot, a lot of wear out of. And it won't be whilst walking my dogs. It'll be um, when I go to town and when I go out for lunch. Gorgeous, gorgeous colours. I feel a very lucky lady um, receiving something like this. So to the uh, needle worker who sent this, I, I should say knitter that sent this, although you are a needle worker as well. Thank you so, so much. I will treasure this, thank you. Um, what else came this week? Well, um, my pink Kahana scissors. Um, they are definitely a different pink to the other two. Um, these are the older two pairs and here is the new pair. As you can see, it's um, a very sort of tan pink. Um, it's lovely. It goes beautiful with my um, colour theme in my drawing room. Um, I do love pink um, and it is a gorgeous shade. Very, very pleased to finally get these. Um, and the moment these came and I saw the shade of pink, I knew the fob that I was going to put on this pair of scissors. Uh, the last two weeks, I've shown you the beautiful fobs uh, for Sarah Rinder, and I had both of them on the blue because I couldn't decide um, which one to keep on. But the moment I saw these scissors, I knew that this fob was the perfect one for this pair of scissors. So the bouquet from uh, the beautiful Sarah Rinder, this glorious bouquet is now on my pink scissors and the beautiful bird bath is on the blue scissors. Things always work out uh, right in the end. So I'm really glad that I waited. Um, oh my God. They're so beautiful. Now, these scissors, um, I had a look this morning and it appears that they are sold out on the Hobby House Needleworks website. But if 
you have not been fortunate to secure a pair, there is another way of getting a pair of these scissors. And it's something that I discovered um, a little while ago when I was after, uh, I can't remember what color it was now, um, but it was a limited edition that had sold out. And a friend of mine said, oh, there's a box that contains these scissors. So you have to buy a set from Kahana that has um, various different objects in, but one of those objects will be the scissors. Now it's an expensive way of getting the scissors because you're buying other items that you may not necessarily want. But um, I did see when I was looking for the scissors this morning on Hobby House Needleworks website that they have got some of those sets. So if you go on their website, you put in Kahana as a search term and you will see these beautiful boxes. And the boxes from Kahana are very, very nice. And inside those boxes, are a group of needlework items and one of them are those beautiful pink scissors. Um, the other thing uh, I got this week that came with the uh, pink scissors was another pair of these mini snips. Now these snips are not something that you would use um, maybe at home when you're stitching but these snips are extremely handy if you are stitching on the go. You can take these on an aeroplane, no problem at all. They're very small. Um, you can put them in your pocket, in your sewing box, uh, in your handbag, uh, you, sorry, a purse in the, if you're in the States. Um, they are just so, so small and they are great for snipping off a thread. I wouldn't use them at home to uh, cut my threads whilst I'm stitching, but I would certainly use them if I was mobile uh, traveling, uh, mo mobile stitching. Um, and they are the sweetest pink, sort of candy floss pink. So um, those are available on the Hobby House and Needleworks website as well. I looked at those this morning. Um, okay, what else? came this week. Wow, um, this little sampler. Here it is. And um, I bought this sampler for two reasons. Well, three reasons. One was that I liked the sampler, but the other one was because of the verse. I have no mother for she died when I was very young but still her memory round my heart like warming mist as hung. Oh. Oh. Just, it gets you. The other reason I bought this sampler, and I haven't got the original to show you because when I finished reproducing it, I gifted it to a friend. The sampler, and I'm sure uh, my followers, regular followers will remember this. This is the model and it's a present for a friend and friend is spelt without an I. Um, this sampler is yet to be released. I love this sampler so much. I've kept this sampler for something special because it is a special sampler. It's very, very different um, and it totally enchanted me whilst I was stitching it. So this sampler will be released um, this summer uh, for something special. So watch this space on that. But you can see from this sampler that there are several of the motifs in this sampler and it's worked in the same uh, reds and blues as the other sampler. And this was a present, and this time it tells us it's a present for Harriet Flute. Um, and present is spelt wrong, P-R-E-A-S-E-N-T. Um, obviously in this school, Spelling was not the uh, teacher's uh, favourite subject because we've got friends spelled incorrectly on the larger sampler and presents spelled incorrectly on this sampler. Um, I think that um, what the girls did in this needlework class, they stitched a sampler for a friend because that's both of these 
clearly from the same school, being stitched as presents. I just find that so, so endearing. Um, and I love making connections. So this is something that I'm going to be looking forward to um, reproducing. And I think this is one I want to stitch myself. I love stitching this one so, so much. Um, and it'll be nice to have the two of them hung together. Um, this sampler, I can just see, is on a very light linen, but there is so much staining on this sampler. Um, it, I'm sure that this um, sort of grunginess that you see, for example, on creme brulee linen, this is soaking through the board that this sampler is mounted on. Um, I will take this apart when I come to reproduce it and investigate a little bit further. Now, what is very interesting, this sampler has no date. This sampler has no name, but it has a date. So I'm hoping between the date on this sampler and the name on this sampler, I may be able to locate the area that the samplers are from. Be very, very interesting. Um, there we are. Now, um, stitching wise, um, I mentioned in last Sunday's video that I'd um, had a booby on my pr project and I had so much um, frogging to do that I had to put it to one side uh, and just de-stress over it before I started it. When you uh, unpick on 56 count, it's not easy. It's very much like I'm picking over one. Um, so I wanted to put that to one side and that was the ideal time for me to um, start and complete a project that I need for later in the year. So I had a couple of days where I worked on that project. I can't show it to you. It's very important that it is a complete surprise, but that's all done and um, ready now to go to our photographer. Um, when I finished that, um, I sat down with um, this uh, project and I had to unpick, I couldn't believe this, from the A all the way through to the Z. It was a lot of unpicking on 56 count. Um, and do you know what I'd done? I had started that very first stitch of the A uh, on the wrong uh, count and it just, it wasn't right. I just had to unpick it. Sometimes when you have a small error, you can just let it ride, but this one I could not. So I unpicked it and uh, it took me a whole evening to unpick. And then I had to painstakingly try and remove all the red fluff um, off this linen. And I used a pair of tweezers that have a magnifying lens and an LED light. You can pick them up very easily off Amazon and they are a godsend. But with this one, I still had some residue of thread. So what I did, I took a soft white eraser and ran it over. And that normally is um, a sure thing, but that still didn't remove all the fluff. So I had to dig deep into my arsenal of tricks. I got a piece of scrap linen, wrapped it around my finger and then I ran it back and forth and that pulled out those really difficult uh, fine uh, fluff from the frogged red thread. So I've restitched it and you really can't tell that there was anything else stitched there before and um, I have continued to work on. To be honest with you, I did not mind restitching out this alphabet because it was such a pleasure to stitch in the first place. It's such a pretty font. I love the H. I think that's exquisite. Um, and the X is very pretty. Well, they all are. Um, the W, the V, the U. Um, 
so 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 pretty i always look to see the n because that's my initial um, and there's quite a lot of variations on the on the way that people stitch ends the e is very pretty as well and then last night i started um this um row um and i worked my borders down a little bit um i just had that much to do to finish this row and then I started that and that is so so enjoyable you have to tie your thread off on each letter it's a bit too far apart to carry your thread but um very pretty this is a lovely red sample it's quite a big sample as well can you see where she's gone wrong on her on her border she's just dropped down there um she um jumps up here and this just runs down now this is pronounced a little bit because i've got my linen on incorrectly but um it's it's a quirky little sampler keeps you on your toes but that's just one of the things i love about these samplers um okay the next thing is i need your help if you were in the Navy or your husbands were in the Navy or have an interest in the armed services, I need your help. I came across a term yesterday when I was researching a sampler and the term is captain of the hold. So I thought, oh, this is a sea captain. Anyway, it, he wasn't a sea captain. He was a chief petty officer and i've tried to research on google the term captain of the hold in relation to the british navy in the 1800s and um, i really am a bit confused about what captain of the hold was so if there's any um navy buffs or um, historians or people that were in uh, the navy and you know please will you let me know um, it would be a real help in just finalizing my research on a particular sampler samplers take you down so many rabbit holes um, i may have told you this before but we um we had a party um just before christmas to celebrate uh, our anniversary and Ray's birthday and um, one of the people at the table um, said oh I bet nobody knows this and he, he asked the table something and I knew it because I had come across it researching um, a sampler um, and he was so so shocked and his wife afterwards told me when we were in the ladies that that was his party trick and he never ever had had anybody guess correctly before so i'd really taken him back needlework it enriches our lives in so many different ways okay um wednesday sue and i are leaving bright and early if everything goes according to plan to go to london on thursday we're spending the day with um the Contented Stitcher, Rebecca Scott, Becky Scott of Whitney Antiques and um, Lamora from Access Commodities. So we're very, very much looking forward to this. Um, we did this last year and um, we had such a fabulous day that we've been looking forward to this all year to repeat. Um, and then on Friday, Sue and I are doubling back to Swindon where we're attending the Cross Stitch Guild. Sue is having a sales table there for her beautiful fripperies and I'm giving a talk in the afternoon to the uh, retreat. Very much looking forward to doing that. Um, and um, because of that, there probably won't be a floss tube next weekend, but hopefully, and I do say hopefully at this point, towards the end of the week ahead, we will be having a special release. So even though you might not have a, a weekend floss tube from me, look out towards the very end of the week for a release. Um, I think in this country, you get so frustrated since COVID. Um, 
My big problem um, has been trying to get A4 cellophane bags of a certain quality. Um, my normal source um, has sold out and I've been patiently waiting for uh, some more bags to come through. So if everything goes according to plan, that release will be there. It's very, very special. It's something that a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, okay. Until the next time, whenever that might be, stay safe, stay well. Bye, see, bye.